I know what you're thinking. Is he going to review this pistol or is he not? Well, you're going to have to ask yourself one question. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you? Newbie, welcome to the 44 Magnum. I'm Raging Amish, and it is time for us to take a look at the most badass weapon in all of Call of Duty. If you watch my channel regularly, then you already know I'm a huge fan of Dirty Harry and the most powerful handgun in the world. It'll blow your head clean off, and I'm excited to say the 44 Magnum is back for Modern Warfare 3. Before we get started, I need to put a minor disclaimer out there. Since the weapon we're looking at is a handgun, I won't be showing clips of just the 44 Magnum. Pistols are designed to be a complement to your primary, and should never be your first choice for handling gunfights. As much as I love the 44 Magnum, I openly admit the gun has limitations. Man's got to know his limitations. Available at level 46, the Magnum is the third pistol unlocked during your prestige. Like all of its brethren, the 44 is semi-automatic, with a cap fire rate of 750 RPM. On paper, this is pretty good, but I always have to laugh a bit when I see how fast you can potentially fire the Magnum. In real life, the gun kicks like a mule thanks to the 44 caliber bullet. If you actually tried to fire the Magnum at 750 shots a minute, you'd break your wrist. But then again, this is Call of Duty. Realism has never factored into this game. We're talking about a series where soldiers magically appear on the battlefield at any given moment, the AA-12 somehow has the least range of all the shotguns, and you can teleport while inflicting a one-hit kill knife. That's for assholes. Moving on, the Magnum holds six rounds. The capacity is small on this pistol. You will only be able to handle one gunfight per magazine, possibly two if you get really lucky. Thankfully, the devs give you plenty of spare ammo by default. Instead of getting three clips like back in Modern Warfare 2, you now get six. To help offset the small capacity, the Magnum has powerful bullets. Each round would do 49 damage up close and 17 at a distance. At first glance, that looks alarmingly bad. Basic math will tell you that's a 3-6 to six hit kill. Thankfully, the damage alone doesn't tell the whole story. The Magnum is one of only a few weapons outside of the snipers to get body multipliers. Your bullets will do different amounts of damage depending on where you shoot the enemy. If you hit the head, you get the game's typical 40% damage boost. Now here's what's unique on the Magnum. If you hit the chest, stomach, or crotch area, the Magnum again gets a 40% damage bonus. Finally, for the body appendages, your bullets will get no extra boost. I realize I've thrown a lot of numbers at you, so here's what it all means. If you hit the enemy center mast up close, you can potentially get a two hit kill. But if you have poor aim at range, you could be looking at a six hit kill. Need I remind you, the gun has a low capacity from the outset and you do not have the option to use extended mags. Oh shit. The best advice I can offer is to only use the Magnum in close quarter battles. I mean it. Don't even try to fight at long range. Your damage starts to drop at 12 and a half meters and falls off completely at around 31 meters. No matter how you try to spin it, the Magnum isn't good at range. Sure, you can get by in hardcore where you only need two hits to kill at max, but I base my assessment on the core game types. Somehow the most powerful handgun in the world becomes a pea shooter at range. I don't know why, but for some reason the devs felt the need to take the Magnum from a 3 hit kill at range in MW2 down to a 6 hit kill in Modern Warfare 3. The Magnum is an unfortunate victim of nerfing developers. So what else is new? Here's the good news. The 44 Magnum is actually pretty unique for a pistol. You do get some useful bonuses that help make up for the poor damage at range. For starters, the Magnum has the smallest hip fire crosshairs in the game and is tied only with the Desert Eagle in this regard. You don't always need to aim down the sight with the Magnum. Shooting from the hip is a very effective option up close, especially when using the Akimbo version. If you're using a solo Magnum, however, hip firing can come back to bite you. Yes, it will work at point blank range, but once your target is anywhere than a few meters away from you, I would advise aiming down the sight. Like all weapons in the tier, your movement speed clocks in at 100%. Basically, you'll move as fast as whatever primary you're carrying. As for your penetration power, the Magnum is above average with medium power. You'd be surprised, the Magnum can be quite reliable when shooting through walls. I see, so it's, um, it's for the penetration. And last, the idle sway is relatively low. The Magnum really doesn't stand out all that much here, so I'm moving on. 
If you want to see more features that'll come in handy, then let's take a look at the raise and drop times. As with any pistol, the Magnum is quick when switching to or from the weapon, but you have the added bonus of the quick drop feature. I'm sure some of you are wondering what this is. The quick drop feature is unique to the pistols, and as far as I know, is unchanged from how it worked in Modern Warfare 2. Your primary will drop in a quarter second, which will be followed by the 44 Magnum's raise time, which is also a quarter second. I have seen multiple sources give different raise times for the Magnum, so I measured it myself. A quarter second is what I came up with. You can have the Magnum out and ready to go in roughly a half second. As for your drop speed, this stat is far less important, but the consistent answer I've seen is 0.45 seconds. Switching back to your primary is an easy endeavor. For an added bonus, the aim down sight speed is fast. The 44 Magnum has an ADS time of 0.15 seconds. Quick draw isn't needed by any means. Sadly, now we're going to start getting back into some more painful stats. For starters, the reloads in the 44 Magnum are lethargic. By default, the Magnum reloads in a whopping 3 seconds. There is no partial reload or empty reload. The Magnum takes 3 seconds, period. While reloading, the bullets enter the chamber at the 1.43 second mark. Truly, the Magnum is designed to handle one gunfight at a time. Your capacity is poor and the reloads are slow. I realize the movies may show the pistol as being all powerful and amazing, but in this game, you've got some problems to deal with. Are you starting to understand the gun a bit better? No, I don't understand. At all. Keeping with the overall bleh feel, the recoil is also pretty bad. To start, the profile is high. It comes in with a value of 60 to 80 upwards and a range of 40 to 50 heading right. Or at least that's what the strategy guide says. On paper, that should mean the gun heads roughly northeast, but in practice the Magnum very consistently kicks up and very slightly to the right. I should also mention the 44 Magnum's recoil is highly visual. Placing shots can be difficult because of how much the gun moves on your screen. Countering the recoil profile is a center speed of 1475. The number is random, I'll admit, but it's still relatively decent. The 44 Magnum kicks a good bit, but the decent center speed will help keep you on target. And of course, for your irons, the 44 Magnum is downright sexy. When I look down these sights, I get an awesome feeling. It's like I'm Dirty Harry in the flesh, bringing law to the newbies. Go ahead, make my day. Still, the Solo Magnum isn't necessarily everyone's cup of tea. The recoil can be a bit hard to manage. If that's the case, you have a few attachment options at your disposal which really do change the gun's playstyle. Akimbo. What's better than one hand cannon that could break your wrist? How about two? I don't know who actually codes the game, but I want to shake the hand of the man who said, yes, Modern Warfare 3 needs Akimbo Magnums. It's moments like this where I really don't care that the game was unrealistic. The feeling of carrying two magnums is awesome. That sounds very stylish. It's also worth noting that the Akimbo setup performs quite well up close. Since you now have two handguns, your capacity is doubled, and you really can take advantage of the magnum's quick pullout time and small crosshairs. When I'm not using Slate of Hand, my favorite secondary has to be the Akimbo magnums. Hell, even when I do use Slate of Hand, I still like messing around with the magnums. You can pull these secondaries out in a flash and handle at least one, possibly two, gunfights. I promise you will love the power of the Akimbo magnums. Tack Knife While I do love the Akimbo version, someone needs to smack the developer who came up with the Tack Knife. I say that out of principle. You guys know my viewpoint on the knife. I've made it abundantly clear. I said stick it in your ass. I realize I'm using the knife in these clips, but I'm doing so very begrudgingly. I'm a critic, so I have to check out everything in the game, including this attachment. I don't like the one-hit kill melee system and desperately want this to be changed. I do have some good news though. Treyarch has openly admitted they're adjusting the knife in Black Ops 2. Now, I have no idea what that means and I'm not holding my breath. Still, maybe, just maybe, they'll get the melee system right. It's not like I've been waiting to see this fixed for five years. Yeah. Either way, I have to admit, the Tac Knife version is still an upgrade over the base version. The visual recoil seems to be lessened by the Tac Knife attachment. You're not going to hear me say any kind words about the actual knife, but even I'll admit, I do prefer shooting the Magnum with this attachment. Moving more into your class design, I like where and how you can use the Magnum. Here's my rule of thumb. If you choose Marathon, Blind Eye, or Scavenger as your first blue perk, then the Magnum is a very reliable go-to for your secondary. End of the day, I'm thrilled to see the 44 in Modern Warfare 3. 
Someone at the development studio gets it. If you want to make a good shooter, give the players iconic weapons that will be remembered for ages. Granted, I am disappointed that the in-game performance isn't quite what you'd expect. I think Modern Warfare 2 had a better feel in this regard. The weapon was a two-hit kill up close regardless of where you hit the enemy, and you could get a three-hit kill at range. I think the nerf for Modern Warfare 3 was completely unnecessary, but I love the pistol all the same. I get to play my favorite shooter and use my favorite pistol at the same time. This game couldn't be more awesome. Funny. I never thought of it as a game. That concludes my review of the 44 Magnum in Modern Warfare 3. I hope you enjoyed and that you'll join me next time, where I'll be taking a look at a sniper, the L118A. Just as an FYI, no, we will not be returning to the quickscope zone. That's reserved for a different sniper. Until next time, this is Raging Amish, checking out.